forget to do that. Okay, so we are recording now. Um, and so if you have to leave early or if you have some technical difficulty, we can furnish you with the video of tonight's program as well. So in addition to doing this program, um, we also have all the work that's on view in the exhibition is also accessible on our website. If you go to providenceartclub.org, uh, and then under our galleries area, you can find our online store and online gallery. And there you can actually zoom in on these artworks and see close-ups of them. Um, and you can get a better sense of the surfaces and textures that you're seeing in the sort of wide shots this evening. So if that's something you're interested in, I hope you'll take advantage of, of looking on our website. Um, and I think that is pretty much the extent of my of my housekeeping sort of introduction. Um, we will do, like I said, all the question and answer at the end. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat throughout the program. So when every artist is speaking, before you forget your question, just type it into the chat and I'll go through all the questions at the end. Um, and, and, we, and all the artists are very happy to answer your questions. So, so don't be shy at all. Um, and so we are gonna, we'll go in order tonight. We'll have Ralph is gonna start off talking about his ceramic work. Then Kate is gonna talk about her paintings, which you can see on the back wall in this image here. And then Martha is gonna talk about her paintings, which are on the left-hand side of this image. So um, I will uh, be going through the slides and for the artists, as you're presenting again, just feel free to say next and I'll move through your slides for you. Um, so we'll start with Ralph. Good evening, I'm uh, very happy to be here uh, tonight and uh, to be uh, part of uh, my first uh, part of a small group uh, show here at the uh, Art Club. I have uh, three themes uh, that I'd like to speak briefly about. The first theme you see right there with those two images, two sets of images, and uh, these are uh, referenced as skates. Uh, the second theme is going to be closed vessels, and the third uh, theme would be dolmens. My interest in all of the considerations is the visual, visceral quality of the work, uh, the forms and the shapes, and how these uh, forms lead us to wonder uh, about what they mean, uh, might they be beautiful, and how might I, you, enjoy them. And um, with all of my work, <clears throat> there is a sense of progression with all of us artists. And uh, things get tweaked a little bit at the time. And uh, for me, that's something uh, that happens with, uh, with life. Eh? We have certain themes in our lives or certain personalities, and whatever, and with our experiences, things change. So here, uh, the, these escapes, um, uh, they're textured. Uh, my work is uh, generally uh, painted and then fired in uh, a smoke firing, a sawdust firing. And if you have an opportunity to go to the gallery, uh, it's got the descriptions there of both, uh, both sets of processes. So, um, Again, uh, I would invite you to go to the uh, PAC site to be able to go to the uh, site where we, you can uh, zoom in on these and uh, notice the, uh, the textual quality. I'm, I'm interested in both the real texture, which is clear, and the uh, visual texture, the variation in color that uh, happens with either the paint or simply with the smoke fire. We go to the next set. Um, these begin uh, the uh, closed vessels. The one on the left is an earlier closed vessel. Um, and um, it's on the conical base. Um, and these started with just a gentle slope at the top, just a gentle indentation. And uh, what I like about these here is the uh, is the uh, silhouette, uh, the uh, sensuality of the exterior uh, form. Then with a little bit of time, I began to indent uh, the, uh, the tops of uh, the closed vessels. Um, there's a mystery to them, not only with the uh, color and the texture, but also they're closed. So might, what might it be that they contain? And that's for part of our wonder. Uh, so 
So there's a, an initial progression. Next step, please. As you'll notice, the, um, they begin to be, uh, take on a winged form. That gentle little uh, slope there uh, becomes a, a bit of a wing. Um, so the one on the uh, cube type uh, base there, uh, it's another progression. There are a lot of, uh, th 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 there are linear elements to this, not only uh, uh, in some of the texture, but actually the, uh, the exterior forms. And again, there's gentle sloping, and, and that's one of the things that fascinates me. Uh, what could these be? What might they hold? Um, what is the variation in the color? Now you'll notice the one on the right, it begins to take on an, another kind of posture, whereas these wings begin to turn a little bit. And it's like our postures during the course of our lives switch a little bit, change a little bit. Uh, and obviously, the what is the foundation? What is our foundation? And the shape here uh, changes, the texture changes. And uh, again, I would invite you to go to uh, to the pack site so you can look at the texture and the color qualities a little bit more. Next step, please. And again, the progression here: these the sense of sphere, the one on the left, how it's thin off of a uh, uh, elongated cubed base, uh, and again, the the wings begin to become more uh, attenuated. And then the one on the right, when this is a little bit of a, an even greater progression where I don't call it a, uh, a closed vessel because the wings become uh, a bit of a fan. Um, next set, please. Um, with the dolmen here, this is an early dolmen. Which I, I built it many years ago, but just finished it in March. Finished it in March by smoke firing it. And the smoke firing, the painting and smoke firing changed it completely. These dolmens, uh, what, what, what is a dolmen? It's a, a post and lintel formation, goes back to prehistoric times, uh, the entryways. So these dolmens, they, the inner space invites you to. Uh, to kind of go through it. Now, because they're smaller, we can't literally go through it, but it invites us to visually go through it. So there's an invitation and a, uh, a holding back. Uh, so there's this kind of a tension uh, more with these than with some of the other forms. Uh, they almost take a posture form where there are these legs that kind of hold up uh, a crown and the lintel uh, there. So I'm fascinated here with shape, color, texture, but also the invitation to enter, but then it stops you from entering. Next one, please. This is uh, what had become a more traditional form after the first one, uh, where the first one had a little bit of a crown on it, and I started adding these, uh, what I call a crown, these little pointed uh, toppings and they begin to overlap the sides. Um, and the, uh, it's just a variation on uh, uh, this invitation uh, that the, the posts don't have to be symmetrical. They don't have to be sturdy. They, they, they change in their own shape and forms themselves. Next one. Uh, this, again, this is uh, another more traditional shape. You'll be able to notice how the, that little bit of a crown uh, goes over uh, the uh, lintel form there. Uh, this was fired many times. I, I had painted it, I didn't like it, I fired it again, and then I, uh, so this is a few years old when I made it, but it was really just finished in March because uh, it was the last time I got to uh, smoke fire it, to sawdust fire it. Next one. Uh, again, this is a variation on the traditional uh, dolmen form. Uh, the, 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 the lintel has changed. It has come down a little bit onto the posts. Uh, they're winged up a little bit. 
Um, and again, it invites you to go in uh, to it, but then it repels you because uh, isn't that what life is like sometimes with us? We invite people in and then we hold them back. We don't want them to get too close. But then again, you see the interior forms, the, the lintel, which uh, goes down into the, uh, the, the posts, and then the posts have component parts. Uh, and this is one of my, uh, 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 my early work when I first uh, went into play, uh, a lot of my pieces were of component parts. So in these uh, dolmens, there again are these, uh, these parts. Uh, next, please. And finally, uh, is an overhang variation. Uh, what's overhang? Well, <laughs> the posts kind of overhang the sides a bit. Uh, they're all uh, they're all dolmen, and uh, there we go. So I just uh, titling these uh, is a bit of a challenge for me, but I I just invite you to go and look at them and. Wallow in the texture, wallow in the color variation, wallow in e entering them, uh, become part of the visual uh, experience of them, and and literally uh, the, the the wonderment of it. Uh, I I believe my, what they do for me is they connect with the collective unconscious. We can relate to these things. We can relate to these stone structures that exist from uh, prehistoric times. And what they mean it leads us to, to wonder more. Thank you very much. I forgot to put my time around, so I don't know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. Uh, that was excellent. Um, so if you have any questions uh, for Ralph about his ceramic work, his process, how he's putting together his work, uh, put them in the chat now before you before you forget or write them down on a pad you have with you or you can put them in your email to me um, just so you don't forget before we do the question and answer at the end. Um, so next we'll move on to Kate and just Kate as you're going through slides just say next and I'll move on for you. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. Hello, I'm Kate Shoot, and I would classify myself as an abstract painter. Although I do some representational work. Um, I love color. The bolder, the better. I think that's pretty obvious. And all of these paintings were painted between 2020 and 2021, in the time of COVID, as the history books will probably name it. Mm -hmm. First slide, please. Oh, wait, sorry. Go back. I messed up. Sorry. Purple Rain, uh, I painted early during COVID. And I think it expresses the angst and the terror of the pandemic. And yet I think I expressed a lyrical quality of hope here in the strength of the colors and the movements. Next, please. I call this unintended consequences and I painted it when the fires were raging in Australia and California. And to paraphrase what a director of the Audubon Society once said, beauty and attitude advocacy are not mutually exclusive. No, Next slide, please. Okay, good. Are you coming now? This I call Where Peace Kisses Justice. And this painting represents an allegorical depiction of some future more equitable time. I don't know how we'll get there. It's just a place I would like to go. Next, please. This painting is Unintended Consequences 2. I uh, decided to make a series and I was driven to paint this subject when an iceberg the size of Los Angeles broke loose from Antarctica and started traveling south. Less obvious in the painting is in the lower left, there is a polar bear and in the upper right-hand column, I mean, upper right-hand section, there's his mate. Next slide, please. This is City in a Storm, and it really speaks about rising water tables and where each waterfront community 
uh, what each waterfront community faces. Next, please. Uh, this is called Chrysanthemums at Sea. And I think it simply expresses how all of us were feeling at sea during COVID. Next, please. This is part of a series on the elements and I call this earth. And looking at it now, it really looks like scorched earth. And I think that is the end game of our careless caretaking. Next, please. This painting is called Seen and Unseen. It's 36 inches wide and 48 inches tall. Um, I created it to show what Abraham Lincoln called our better angels at work and they're shining down on the earth, compassion and kindness. And in between, in the middle ground, there are six faces of, of immigrants in the shadows. And over to the right, in the lower section, there's a face, a woman's face, which I painted completely un sub subconsciously. But when I looked at it, I decided it was the face of of justice. And recently I was looking at this painting with a friend and she said, justice has a black eye. And I said, yes, she does. Next painting, please. Next. Um, this painting is my most recent. It's tiny, it's three inches by three inches. And I call it escape. And I think it expresses all of our coming out of our caves now and trying to ease our way into a new way of existence. Next, please. This painting I call Motherhood Vanquishes COVID. And I think it's about the transformation that my eight month old grandson has brought, me, brought to me and my whole family. He drives me to shine a light on injustice and focus on the responsibility for guardianship we humans have on this earth. And Gregory's being brings an urgency to that work. One more thing I would like to say is that I would like to thank Francis Mittendorf, Teresa Girard, Anthony Tomaselli, Bill Lane, Sam Green, and Lori Klein, and Carolyn Wolf for their amazing teaching and their supporting me all these 20 years. And if you'd like to know more about me, my work is, as Michael has mentioned, on the online store at providenceartclub.org. And I have a website, which is called Shoot Me Now. And that's my last name. Anyway, so thank you very much. and. We've all very much appreciate your coming. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. That was great. So if you have any questions specifically for Kate and Kate's component of the show, put them in the chat again before you forget to write them down or, or however you'd like to do it, um, because we will do all the questions together at the end. So next is Martha. Um, and so uh, same thing for you, Martha. I'll let you take it away. I was going to start this by a uh, thank you uh, to all the people at the Providence Art Club who have supported me and helped me uh, through all of this. And this again, like Kate, is my COVID year of work. Um, I'm usually a landscape painter, as all of you know, and I, um, but I resorted to photographs, a lot of photographs this time. Some of them are from uh, life, but uh, something unusual for me. My son came to visit me on Angel's Lane when it was open and right before this closed down and I decided to capture that moment. It was a very special moment to me that he was there. He has a job in, in the art world and he was one of his first ex exposures to the club and I wanted to catch that moment. So I'm very uh, influenced by Vuillard, uh, 
Bonard. I look at a lot of different artists. These people really speak to me. I like interiors. I like to have the questions as to just what is in that next room and where you want to go and look around a corner and uh, it has a mystery to it. So that's the first, that's my son, Nicholas. Next, please. And again, we're back to family and COVID again. My daughter uh, sitting quietly in my studio. Uh, I'm fairly certain she's looking at a John Singer Sargent book there. <laughs> and she, uh, I'm captured myself painting her uh, in the mirror behind her. And uh, she's, you know, one of the loves of my life. I love doing these children and putting them in my work. So that's Emily. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Uh, this, I've been painting on my farm in Tiverton for the last 35 years, and I'm a landscape painter. And this year during COVID, I decided to focus on the working part of owning a farm. Um, I've got to turn my, my computer on. Um, and I focused on the real effort that it takes, and it's the same. That hasn't changed. The work on the farm work and growing things we eat and animals eat has been going on for thousands of years, and depictions of it from Bruegel. I looked at Bruegel and I've looked at the haystacks with Monet, and I've gone on. And I decided I would focus on what it takes to to make a place run. And this was the real labor of the day. So we were bringing in the hay. So that's the triptych. We did them individually, but it, it was three together. This is the heave ho method, as they say. <laughs> it's a lot of work in a very hot, sunny day. So I'm very appreciative to these men who did the work for me too. And that's also dedicated to them. Next, please. Again, here we go. We have the crew, as they say, and this is the farm headed up toward the barn and the constant continuation of doing the work on a farm. Again, the work, the farm is horses and uh, I've, we all know the beautiful paintings by Munnings and the famous horses he painted and the people, but the real working part of owning horses is the day-to-day -day stuff. And this is what I wanted to paint this year, especially during COVID and in difficult times. I wanted people to see, it is, it's a, and here it is. So this is Zip getting his shoes on. <laughs> I said it, I, I call it his ballet shoes. <laughs> Next, please. Again, day to day, we got to clean those buckets out and wash them and hang them and fill hay nets and all of the above. And I greatly enjoyed doing these. Um, my Jack Russell Terrier is doing her usual thing, crimping the hose so that no water is coming out. But um, I decided we need a little humor in our life too, especially during these times. So next, please. These are the little girls, uh, the two little rescues that we have on the farm. And they're so beautiful and tiny little donkeys, miniature donkeys. And I decided to uh, capture the two little sisters together on the farm in the background. So next, please. This is this was a project. This I decided to attack. This is the famous Quaker Bake. It takes place at the Allen's Neck Friends Meeting in West Westport in uh, Mass, and it's been an on the oldest the oldest clam bake in the country. It's been going on for almost two hundred years. It's I think it's almost as old as the I think it's about the same age as the Providence Art Club, and. Uh, I love the dapple light coming through the trees and the hitting the canvases. And I love the teamwork effort that goes into creating this incredible uh, bake that serves hundreds of people. So I decided to do a few of these. So I've done a series of the Quaker bake and there we go. And that's it, boy, that's how I made it through. And it was painting and thank goodness for, Franny Middendorf, who I did so much work for during her 
Zoom classes with her painting in the great museums of the world, uh, Judy Villeman, Sean Kenny, the constant encouragement and, you know, don't be nervous, Martha, just do it. So um, I decided here I am handing you my brushes so that you can see that I'm working away here in my hall, in my studio. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. And Michael, your group did such a beautiful job hanging the show and I'm very appreciative of it. Thank you. Well, thank all three of you. That's excellent. Um, I appreciate it. So we have some, let's see, we have some, let me just open my chat here. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Um, the, like I said, this is, this is just a little view into the show. So I would encourage you to come and see the show in person through the 28th. Um, we are open 12 to 4 p.m. Um, and also we're happy to open the galleries by appointment too. Um, so I will start off at the, let me go back to the top of this chat here. Okay. Um, so a question from Susan Grassick. Uh, Susan said, Kate, I was at the show today, wonderful. And it strikes me that size is one of the features of your work. You have pieces that range from about three feet by four feet to tiny wooden blocks that must be about three inches by three inches. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you think um, how you think about size as a means of expression? Um, so be sure to let me just unmute you, Kate. There you go. There we go. Um, thank you, Susie. Um, size is, you know, does influence what you work on. Um, I am freest when I'm painting large, but I was surprised how much I enjoyed the three inch by three inch uh, squares that I painted. Um, I was uh, imitating Michael Rose, actually, his <laughs> work, and I forgot to say in my talk how much I appreciated what you and and Abba and Bree did to hang the show. And was I was great. very impressed with your little ones. And I flipped them over. I said, oh, I know where Kate got this from, the vest and everything. <laughs> but that's great. I was very, I was very flattered by that. <laughs> but um, size does dictate how you paint to a great extent. And um, I enjoyed going all over the place in size. <laughs> that's all I can say. Do you that. paint the um, Do you paint the large paintings at home in your apartment? Yes. Do you, have a, do you have a Do you have a separate studio space in your apartment where you can do that? I do. I you took do. over a bedroom, and I have one of those very large easel easels. Oh, that's great. Holds it, so yeah. excellent. Um, the next question is also for Kate from Anne, uh, and Anne said, "Kate, do you start your paintings with a concept or issue in mind, or do you just start and see where the strokes of paint take you?" Um, I, to quote uh, Anthony Tomaselli, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. that, uh, I do both. Um, sometimes the painting that I call Purple Rain, what struck me was a, a, a shadow on the wall. And that is the orange sort of streak in the middle. And then I built the rest of the painting around it. Um, and then um, pretty much, Water, for example, is one of the elements. I got the I knew what colors I wanted to use, but I didn't. I just let it happen, and then that black spot in the middle. I don't know what that is. A leaf, you know, a bomb. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> you know, could be anything. Uh, and when I finished it, I realized I could have been painting this from underneath the water. I wasn't sure what point of view I had. So. So it's really both. Excellent. Um, so Rochelle Russell has questions for all three of you. So I'll start, I'll start with her question for Ralph. She said, Ralph, are making or experiencing your sculptures a spiritual practice for you? And make sure you're uh, unmuted. Yeah, uh, yes, the answer to that question is yes. Um, um, I, I seldom have a, um, uh, a sketch in mind uh, when I first start with these pieces. Some of it is progression. Some of it is I, I, I look a lot at shapes. I like space. 
I like the interrelationship between positive and negative space uh, shapes. Um, so it's a dialogue, and as life is a dialogue within ourselves <clears throat> during the course of our lives and with others that uh, we meet. And sometimes the dialogue is easy, sometimes it's not. Uh, as being a religious brother, uh, all of this, uh, this notion of prayer and spiritual development is, uh, is part of my art making. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I kind of go at it and uh, with all of art making, there's a, uh, a dialogue that's involved. We, we initiate some sort of activity. We see what it happens to it. We step back and we listen to what it's saying to us. So there's this constant uh, dialogue that happens. And what I find sometimes, <clears throat> especially with the, uh, with the uh, closed vessels, it moves in a direction after a while that I don't like it, that I just slit the sides and reshape it and then reattach it. So there's uh, the spirituality of um, self-consciousness and, and self-development uh, in relationship to our whole, uh, our larger being. That's great. Thank you, Ralph. Um, another question from Rochelle is for Kate. Uh, she said, Kate, inspired by your powerful paintings, if you ever did more representational work, I'm interested in how you made the transition from representational painting to abstract expression. So can you... hmm. <clears throat> um, I took a workshop on on the subject of abstract, and it was it was a three day workshop, and um, and the concept was you make a, a shape and start coloring or painting that little shape on a large canvas and then see where the next shape would take you. And that's how I began. And then I found I was doing more and more abstracts. And, um, but I do, I do find that when I paint with watercolor, I, I am much more representational than when I paint with abstract. And I can't explain why that is exactly, but it's what happens. Interesting. Thank you. Um, and then Rochelle's question for Martha is, how do you find new inspiration within the local landscape? That's a good question. <clears throat> I, observation. I mean, I, you, you look for things that catch your eye and you, go for it. I mean, it's, and also the more you paint, the more it propels itself. Um, it's, if you have a problem, if you're stuck with your work, I think sometimes doing a uh, copy of a famous painting would really help you and look at it a different way, how they did it, why they did it, understand it and move on from there. It's amazing how that will trigger more work coming out of you. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Rochelle. I, um, I was thinking of Ralph, though. Uh, there's a wonderful quote, uh, of the architect who designed the World's Fair at the turn of the century, the Chicago Art Museum. Uh, he has a quote on his tombstone that I love, and it says, my work is prayer. <laughs> and I thought Ralph would like that because it's so true, you know. It's uh, lovely. Yeah, I was very pleased when I saw that. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then a question uh, from Barbara for Kate. And she said, Kate, do you consider yourself to be a fatalist? Fatalist? Mm. No, actually, I consider myself to be a cockeyed optimist. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Um, so everybody's welcome to put more questions in the chat. I have, I'll start asking questions if you don't have any, but you're very welcome to put your own questions in. Uh, and then Francis is here, and Francis said, brava, 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 wonderful show and great talk. Loved it. So thank you, Francis, for being here. Um, so my qu next question is, I, I did ask Kate about what her where she's painting at home. And I have the same question for both Ralph and for Martha, and you can answer, uh, Ralph, if you want to answer first, you can. For you, Ralph, where are you making your work? Do you have, uh, you mentioned at one point that you were doing the firing here in Rhode Island. Um, so 
because you're between New York and Rhode Island, how are you and where are you making your work? If you, can you talk a little bit about that, the background of where you're making things? Sure. Uh, I belong to a uh, small uh, neighborhood studio about three miles away. Um, <clears throat> there are certain limitations because it's not my space. Um, and the size of the kill is uh, 29 inch, 20, a little over 29 inches in the interior. So I'm kind of limited. I would like to build bigger and I have in the past and component parts, but uh, so I'm limited uh, in the space that I currently have. Uh, but I disc fire and the first firing is done uh, locally there in uh, Yonkers. Uh, then my folks live in Western Cranston. I uh, have a big piece of property and there's a big uh, utility garage in the middle of the property. So I have my um, 55 gallon drum that I do the firing in on the far side, on the east side where there's nobody can see it. Uh, and all we'll do maybe is eventually smell a little bit of an odor of um, uh, a fire happening, but there is no flame after the first uh, after the first uh, couple of minutes when I get the uh, uh, sawdust to ember fire, uh, and then it kind of smokes down uh, like a cigarette. There's no flame; it's just these embers that take either a day from 24 hours to 36, 40 hours to uh, to finish the barrel. Um, uh, and in, in March, I did a couple of firings in Rhode Island, uh, and um, it was raining and windy one of the times. So my brother was uh, my brother was very kind in allowing me to uh, do the smoke firing inside the garage. It's, again, it's a utility garage and it's far away from the house. So I said, Ah, this is a good way to do it, even in the middle of the winter now. <laughs> That's interesting. That's great. It's good to have those kind of uh, those kind of spaces that you can work in. That's interesting. Uh, and then for you, Martha, what's your studio space like? Are you painting mostly out at your farm, or do you have another location where you're painting? I'm still painting on the farm. I have a studio there, but because we've moved to Westport and the house, I have taken up residence in our um, mudroom, which is where it's a big <laughs> room. And I've got a wall-mounted easel that I've purchased, and I love it. It holds really, really large canvases. So I've been working much larger. And um, I'm hoping to have uh, more work from there. It'd be good. That's so. great. Uh, a question for all three of you is, did all three of you, all three of you were making work over the last year. Um, did you find the last year to be a, uh, a creatively fulfilling one? Did you find it challenging to make work over the last year? What are, what are your feelings? And that's a question for all three of you can answer in whatever order you feel comfortable. Um, what, what were your feelings about making art during the time of COVID? I was fortunate enough to be able to be in Frances Middendorf's class. I told you that in the beginning and she encouraged us to um, transcribe famous artists work from paintings and then come up with a painting that was personal to ourselves that was affected by the work that we had copied. And I can't tell you how much work poured out of that. It was a great stimulus to continue to paint and it helped me get through it. The, this lockdown that I, I'm not, was not good at. <laughs> um, I don't, I felt isolated and I, I felt much happier when I was doing the painting. It helped a lot. That's great. And for you, Kate? I'll, I'll follow Martha to say, I too was in Francis' class and that was absolutely wonderful. But going back to answer the question, I was first in February, maybe. I was just blocked. I couldn't do anything. And um, Lori Klein taught a class um, on moving through the pandemic that helped me. And I came up with what I call my uh, hairball painting. And um, nobody will ever see that because it was awful but mm -hmm. but it released a whole bunch of things yeah and my painting was either 
a sort of meditative release or or it was a refuge and mm -hmm. I bounced between both of those things yeah and as I say I I like Martha I I really enjoyed um, Francis's class and in in my thanks I also forgot to say I took a really nice class with Judy Vomay and that was helpful too the zoom classes offered by the art club really helped um, that's great Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Uh, yeah. and, for, and for you, Ralph, as well. Uh, well, the studio was closed uh, at the mid-March last year until the middle of August before she opened it up again. Uh, so I, I was getting a little concerned because, uh, you know, it takes a while to do some of the work uh, and it's a slow process. So, but once she opened up, uh, she was allowing four people in, that sort of stuff. And uh, so I, I started to go more regularly. Um, and as uh, Christmas came around, I was going up practically every day up until I, I haven't done any work uh, other than firing uh, since uh, March. I've got two pieces uh, in, in process now, but uh, it helped me focus because. I had the, uh, the date for this show and uh, it was important to me. And uh, so, but, but uh, it was a little bit of a, a release that helped create a sense of regularity for me because I got out of the, the, the community and uh, I was able to deal with my concerns and just not the concerns of the other 19 people that I lived with. Mm -hmm. It's a big family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. great too. Um, so again, if anyone else has any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat or I'll keep asking questions. Um, another question that came to mind was uh, for Martha. Martha, you mentioned uh, working from some photos and, and you mentioned a little bit of that. Was that a challenge for you working from photos? Is that different from what you normally do or yeah. can you speak it, to that a little bit? I, it is different from what I normally do. I am basically a plein air painter. I go out and a la prima, I just paint. I have a good setup. I go out usually morning light and go. But I uh, had, couldn't do it. So I worked from photographs and my challenge was to do a painting, not a recreation of a photograph. I wanted to make sure that it was, was a painting. And, um, so that was the challenge. It, it, uh, we don't need to do photographs if we have cameras for that and we want it to be a painting. So uh, that's what I was working on. And so, and so you're working in, so Martha, you're working primarily in oil. Oh, Kate, oil. And you're working in, um, Kate's working in acrylic and then Ralph is working in ceramic. So do you each want to talk about why you chose the medium you're working in and, and what the considerations are for you in, in doing that. And we can start, again, we can start with anyone for that. Why do you use uh, the type of paint or, or where does that choice come from for you? I like, I like dirt. So, <laughs> and I'm a gardener. Uh, so I find if I go through long periods without being able to get my hands dirty in uh, the earth or stay away from clay for too long, things uh, don't resonate well with me. So mm -hmm. I, I've got to be part of the uh, cre uh, God's creation and get involved with uh, trying to make things, trying to grow things. So uh, the clay is very vis visceral. I, uh, I like the feel of it. I, I like to be able to play with the, what, it, what it feels like to texturize the shape. Uh, and I like spatial relationships. I, I, I enjoy that. And you'll notice sometimes <clears throat> with my, uh, uh, the base upon which a dolmen is built or the, uh, the base upon which a, uh, a closed vessel is placed, it's skewed. Nothing is uh, uh, perfectly symmetrical. It's got a, everything has an asymmetry balance. Uh, and that's how I like things. And a lot of people, well, 
some of my relatives are saying, you like everything crooked. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, I do. I like the, you know, keep people guessing. <laughs> That's great. And for you, for you, Kate? Well, I um, think about myself as, as, um, as a kid, and I would change my mind in, in writing any answer on a test or whatever, and I would erase to, to, until I made a hole in the paper. <laughs> and, um, basically, I think acrylic allows me to rethink and reposition <laughs> quickly. Uh, I don't have to wait for the paint to dry as I would in oil. And, and except for using um, Mr. Clean's eraser, it's tough to make a, to make a change in watercolor. So I think that's probably why I'm most comfortable in acrylic. That's great. And for you, I, I love I love oil paint. I love it. I love the colors of it. I love it's it's more subtle. It is it's creamy. I you can move it around. It's very much very forgiving, and you can change it. You can paint into it, you can scrape it off, you can do it again. I, and I do a lot of that. I paint, I do a lot of painting and take it home and I scrape it all off. And I feel good doing that because when you are working on a piece of work and it becomes precious to you, so precious, you get tighter and tighter, you lose your spontaneity, the ability to make it something, you know, that again, painterly, and uh, I take it back and I paint it again and I'm always happier when I do that. Um, I think it's a healthy thing to do every now and then, scrape it down. <laughs> <laughs> and the oils great. are great for that. Excellent, very good answers, that's very cool. Um, so now we have a question from Susie who said, uh, for each of you, COVID has had its impact on, its all, on all, so this is a question for all of you. Um, COVID has had its impact on us all. Um, what do you think about as we come out of this phase? Is it back to normal or something very new as we emerge on the other side? Bottom line, what do you expect will be the same or an extension of the same or what do you foresee being different for each of you as a result of everything that's happened over the last year and your creativity and that and all of that? So for this question, why don't we start with Kate, then, then Ralph, then Martha. Okay. Well, I like to say that the new normal is not is not the normal we knew. Exactly. I think it's going to be everything will be different, and some will be some lessons we learned from COVID. I think will help us move forward in a more positive way. Um, and 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 actually, I've lost part two of the question. Um, uh, part two was. Do you see, uh, do you expect things that will be the same or what do you foresee being different? Um, I think, and actually this isn't my own idea, I read this, that um, friendships are being reevaluated because um, uh, it, it's believed that we can't hold on to as many friendships as we think we can on Facebook. I mean, can't have 1,200 friends. Right. <laughs> Nobody human could maintain that. Um, so when we went into isolation, I think we made some choices about whom we were going to connect with. And, and now that we are freer, we can make new choices. Mm -hmm. But um, that's one thing that will have changed and become anew. Um, and I think work will maybe be some virtual and some in person. I mean, we've now found, and that opens us up to a global connection mm -hmm. um, without flying there. So that'll be good. Those are two things I see in, in terms of painting. I don't see that it'll be wildly different other than Zoom classes versus in-person classes. Anyway. And for you, Ralph? I think there are uh, two or three things that will come from COVID. One is that we've had to spend more time with our interior life. Um, 
learning how we respond to family situations, to community situations, to other people. Uh, sometimes, at least in my learning, is I wasn't as magnanimous as I thought I would be. Uh, become more impatient with others. Um, so it's a matter of this uh, development, spiritual development, if you, uh, if you want to say, how can I develop a new sense of patience? And how can I appreciate the goodness that surrounds me, the goodness that's in me, and the goodness that surrounds me? And how can I respond to that uh, and help uh, and bring that to other people? Um, I don't know that it's going to change my work other than being a little bit more attentive to the incremental progression that happens. And maybe sometimes, like Martha said, kind of explode and, and, and go mm -hmm. do something different because we need to do something different to break the mold because sometimes things can become too precious. Mm -hmm. So we have to dare a little bit more to. Excellent. Thank you. And then for Martha? I totally agree with Kate. I don't think that going back to nor it, there's no normal after this. This has changed us, I think, irrevocably, not necessarily all terribly, but we are changed by it. I have to say that the first day that I walked into the Providence Art Club when COVID restrictions were lifted and we were able to attend classes in person, even with masks on, I was so filled with joy from that. It was being with other artists. It was what the club is about. It is being around other artists, talking with other artists. It's the most important thing an artist can do. No art was created in a vacuum. It, we need each other. And um, I think that it was, that was a very special moment to be able to go back and attend classes again and hear what other artists are thinking and see what they're doing and hear their difficulties and their triumphs. And I think that's just gonna get better. I really do. I think we're gonna have more and more time together. We're gonna to be able to get together more regularly. And even with the Zoom, it's fantastic. We can see each other's work. Hey, would you like to see my new work? I just started this and, and I can turn it around and show it and I do it all the time. Uh, I send all my new work to Frances Medendorf and she mm -hmm. gives me comments back on it. And it's been good, really great. And um, other friends, a lot of other friends as well, not just for any, but other artists, friends. So I think that's it. That's great. Okay. Thank you for that, for that great question, Susie. That was excellent. Uh, that's a, actually a very good closing question. Yeah. Um, because that's normally the sort of tone that I have in my closing questions. So I appreciate that very much. Um, as we come down to, we're nearing the end of our hour here. So I would say thank you to all three of our artists for being with us. Excellent. We, I think we all learned a little bit about each of you and the type of work that you are, that you're making. Um, I would thank everyone who joined us this evening on a beautiful summer evening. You know, the sun doesn't set till eight o'clock now, so you can still go outside and do something. Um, yeah. But uh, I would thank you all for joining us for this yeah. and I'll send you all um, this video. The other thing I would say is, again, the show is up till May 28th. We will be there this Sunday. So please come over, see the show. Um, we do have parking at the art club. So you're welcome to use our parking lot when you come and visit. Um, and I would really encourage you to come see the work in person. If you're a little uncomfortable being in public spaces, there is plenty of space at the art club. You can, you know, we can have 30 people in the gallery and you really don't feel it. So I would encourage you to come in person if you feel comfortable doing that. And then also go to our website at providenceartclub.org and you can see every piece that's in the show and you can look at them more closely and you can examine them and experience them virtually as well. Um, and then the other thing I would say is that in addition to Ralph, Kate and Martha's exhibition, we have uh, a solo show of a RISD student that's in the Castle Novo Gallery that's very good. Um, I'd encourage you to come see that. We have a photography show in the Dodge House um, and next week, uh, next Wednesday, uh, same time, 6 p.m., we are going to have an artist talk with Connor, who's the RISD student uh, who has a show. That's also another free artist talk. Uh, and the res reservations for that are on Eventbrite, where you found this program. So please 
join us for that. And then we will also have uh, on Thursday evening of next week at 6 p.m. a program with some of the photographers. Uh, that program is not yet posted, uh, but if you'd like to learn more about that, please send me an email and I'll put you on the list for it in advance before we before we set it up. So again, I would thank all of you for being here tonight. Thank you to Ralph, Kate, and Martha. It's a really lovely show. I hope you will come see it in person. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks to you thanks. all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Have a great evening, everybody. You too.